The following program is classified G. It's suitable for all ages. We would like to remind our viewers that the views expressed in this program by our participating guests are solely viewpoints of them who take part and does not reflect the views and beliefs of the Verena Media Network. Hello and welcome to uh, this week's program of Gen XYZ and this is a program where we talk about contemporary topics or issues based on the youth. Now today on the program we'll be talking about the education system of Catholic schools or convents because we feel that this type of education and the system of education is quite different compared to all the other schools in uh, Sri Lanka. To share the experience now, it's my pleasure to invite Reverend Sister Nirmali who is the former principal of St. Paul's Girls College and also Sister Rihanna from uh, the principal of St. Anthony's Girls College and they are also a part of the Apostolic Carmel Congregation. Sisters, thank you very much for taking the time to join me on the show today. So to start off the conversation, I would like to know your experience on joining this Catholic Church and your experience on teaching schools as principals. Sister Nirmali, if we can start off with you. Uh, yes, uh, I have studied right along in private Catholic schools. Uh, in Holy Family Convent, Bambalapitya and Holy Cross College, Gampa, right along. Uh, but I have served always in state schools because my appointment was uh, maths, uh, maths appointment in government schools. So I have started my uh, first appointment at Nikavaratiya uh, Madhya Mahavidyale. So that's a mixed school with boys and girls. Uh, hardly any Catholic staff and the children also, majority Buddhist children, uh, very few Catholic children. And I, I, I must tell you that uh, I was very much enriched in that school. There were some Buddhist monks also on staff. Uh, so uh, more than uh, teaching the subject, I was interested in their um, various problems in life, family difficulties. So I was visiting their homes and more than teaching the subject, I was able to guide them. So I was very happy with them. I remember how uh, uh, when I went to class, I was asking for their names. And one boy was saying, Sister, I'm Mudiyanse. Those are their names. Then another boy saying, I'm Mudiyanse, Mudiyanse. Then another boy, what's your name? M.M. Mudiyanse. So I was very interested in them. Very uh, nice children. Uh, some very clever children. So uh, that was a remote village. I enjoyed my teaching career. Principal was one Mr. Senviratna, who is principal. Uh, I was uh, uh, able to do a good service in that school. Then after about two or three years, I had to work out a transfer to uh, Potuhara Central. Again, that was a Buddhist Mahavidyalaya. Potuhara Central was Dutugamun Madhya Mahavidyalaya. Uh, there also uh, hardly any Catholic students, boys and girls, and uh, very few Catholic teachers on the staff. Uh, I, again, I was very much uh, involved in the school education as well as uh, guidance of the youth and they were visiting the convent during their free time uh, singing songs with the sisters so uh, I was very much in touch with the students uh, and I enjoyed the staff also there again Buddhist monks on the staff I received much uh, enrichment by teaching in government schools mixed schools Buddhist schools then I had to work out my transfer to uh, Kelania St. Paul's Balika Girls School and there I was uh, teaching for 25 years uh, and out of that 20 years I was the principal of the school and I enjoyed I was very much uh, enriched and I made much achievement in that school because uh, 20 years is a long period of time in the school of course so uh, after about 13 years of my teaching career being a principal, I realized that every child in the school was admitted by me after 13 years. So my great joy was to see the children bloomed and blossomed for the society, uh, many of them prefects also. So um, I was, uh, I must say, uh, uh, today I am very happy that I have been uh, like a scaffolding 
and to climb in their lives and uh, also in the Facebook now when I see these students uh, very successful in life it gives me great joy. That's amazing sister thank you for sharing that story with us and sister Nirmali what is your experience of engaging with the Catholic Church? Uh, Catholic Church actually my faith comes from embracing uh, the Catholic Church and Jesus is our Lord so I if I start my uh, experiences in the Catholic education I studied under the Apostolic Carmel Sisters at St. Anthony's Girls School, Colpity, and I bring back my experiences today very happily by uh, being molded and guided and helped me to walk in the faith formation. So, great uh, oh, uh, blessings to them uh, for molding children like us. So, Having said that, Shanali, I would like to tell you my experience in the Catholic uh, teaching apostolate. Uh, actually, we are mostly exams are needed, but uh, we are not exam oriented. If I say I feel I, I feel I'm correct because we are value based. We are orient, our orientation is on value based education and the faith formation. So. So we uh, tell the children while they, uh, while they study for their exams, all that, when we motivate them, our special concern uh, on them is to uh, guide them, motivate them, lead them according to the faith that they have embraced. So in our Catholic schools, we also have children learning from other religion to Buddhists, uh, Hindus, Muslims, but still for all, uh, the, uh, through the Catholic education, we invite them also to embrace their faith and to walk by uh, their precepts. And also, uh, we also motivate them, guide them and strengthen them always in our assemblies and whatever the interaction we have with them, we tell them the values are needed for their lives. Without values uh, of the society, of their religion, they cannot uh, march forward. So actually, as I feel, as what I have got from the Apostolic Carmel Sisters in my childhood as a student, I try to impart to my students where I serve now. So in general, if I say, we sisters, the fathers in the Catholic education, we mostly uh, stress on value-based education and the faith formation. Then comes other things, I mean the exams, all the other things, but mainly a human being is formed with the holistic education. Holistic education, uh, spiritual, physical, intellectual, all these comes together. So uh, Catholic education mainly in, in keeping to the Catholic faith as well as forming them in Catholic faith and for the other students forming them in other religion, we also enlighten them, enrich them and motivate them and we are behind them to bring them values to their lives. Okay, Sister Rihanna. Now when it comes to this major decision of selecting a school for your child, like parents have a debate between themselves whether they are going to send them to a Catholic school, a private school, a government school, an international school. So what do you think parents should look out for or both of you can give me your ideas on this. What makes Catholic schools or convents stand out from the rest of the schools? Sister Nirmali, if you can give your ideas on that. Uh, now, uh, in Catholic schools, uh, the person is very important in education. Uh, now, in government schools, there are time schedules, syllabus to be covered, book education, uh, exams, they are very important. But uh, the discipline that you get in a Catholic school comes from child-centered education. Now, parent is very much involved in the education of the child. So, when a, a child selects the school according to their preference, now, uh, we want to admit there are certain government, government criteria in admitting children. You have to go by that. Uh, now, some of our schools are vested schools taken to government in 1960. So, we have um, a right of maintaining percentages. So, at the time of take, schools takeover, the percentages that were there, we maintain. Uh, so, the education in a private school 
or the Catholic school uh, is uh, um, it, it has this criteria the child centered person oriented uh, faith formation uh, the attitudes the values are very important in uh, child so more than paying attention to uh, exam based result based education catholic education is child centered education forming the character uh, building up the personality of the child as the child grows in age from class to class they must advance also in values that is stressed in catholic education so the child must be prepared for future society in catholic education it is not just filling a pail it's uh, awakening of the child in faith uh, lighting a fire in the child uh, making the child a lifelong learner so those are catholic values in educating a child so the parents can be very poor parents can be very ignorant but the parents are made to be child centered so the families involved in the school not only coming and taking the report once a term but uh, involved with the principal joining hands with the staff in catholic education that is stressed the person faith formation awakening of the child for the future so those are uh, the differences in uh, government schools uh, because in government schools you have to uh, fulfill certain criteria uh, the protocol given by the um, zonal office uh, regional office you have to abide by them but in catholic education uh, we spend a lot of time in other activities as well uh, like uh, child oriented education so that's the difference right thank you sister nirmali before we continue the discussion we'll have to go into a short commercial break we'll be back soon you're watching gen xyz Welcome back to Gen X Y Z, and we are in discussion with Reverend Sister Nirmali and Reverend Sister Riana. Now, Sister Nirmali, uh, before we went into the break, you told about where Catholic schools stand out. In your, you all are focusing on the discipline aspect as well, and Catholic schools are known for their disciplinary actions and how they train their children. Uh, Sister Riana, if you could share your ideas now, since you are the principal of a school as well, uh, what are the disciplinary measures that you have taken, and how? What are the actions you have taken in order to teach discipline to the children? Well, Shirali, as I told you, in Catholic education faith formation, value-based education, we are, our orientation is on that mainly, uh, thereby we cater to them for their uh, studies and to uh, excel in their studies as well as in their exams, all that. So as the discipline is the main thing for a Catholic school because we train them from the time they enter into the school. So they say, we say from their attire. We all, all of us know that uniform is, but the way they comb their hair, even for the boys, how they have to comb their hair, and for the girls, they have to have the hats and all that, the shoes, all that, the first thing. So I, I also tell them when they come on uh, Monday morning that everything should be clean and neat and all that. Even if the, uh, uh, we'll say, their tie knot is not put properly, I used to tell them, or oh, one of our sisters who is always, always in a Catholic school, uh, with the principal we have a sister or a father. That is something because with the principal because we have to we need the collaboration of a sister or a father to see all that. So, uh, through their guidance, the teachers are also uh, uh, motivated and uh, to see to all this. So, even a child, if the ribbon is not put properly, then and there, we tell them, uh, we call out the name slowly and tell them, put the ribbon properly, put the tie knot properly, see your uh, laces come out. Those things. So those things matter. It may be a very minor matter, but 
it has a long way. So from the beginning, child learns to uh, dress up well. That is one thing. And also, uh, the when uh, in our schools we also have this every school uh, when we have to change a period, they uh, strike a bell. It is. But then. Uh, in all our schools, in Catholic schools especially, as I speak about AC schools, the bell will be silent. And at that moment, we all have to get up and keep silence. So in keeping silence, we train them uh, to thank the Lord for what they have studied at the uh, previous period and to get the help of the Lord for the next period. And to thank the Lord, this is what I tell my children when during that silent bell, it is rung for you all for the, to get ready for the next lesson. It is the time for you to thank the Lord according to your own religion, the teacher whom you have taught, who taught you just now something for your life. And also thank the Lord uh, for that teacher and also ask the grace, I mean, help from the Lord to do their best in the next period. That, that is something because in the silent period, they start uh, to take the book and all that so also I have told them and uh, uh, in order to uh, train them I used to tell now that class is not silent not that I want to make them pinpoint they are wrong doing or something but through that to make them aware this is the time for me to uh, settle with my own self and to get ready uh, with the Lord whom with the faith I have embraced it may be careful mainly Catholic, then other religion who are there, uh, students who are of other religion also, they have learned to pray according to their faith. That is one thing then. And also, uh, when they come for the religious assembly in the morning assembly, first, before we have the assembly conducted, first we pray. And in my school, as we, uh, we have all other religions, so we have a common prayer. So I tell them, you are close your eyes, you hear the sound around, but recollect yourself, recollect all your thoughts and get into the mood. So when we do that, I tell them why we are doing. Then we don't become the noisy people or uh, even as children, they become noisy and all that. But within them, from the beginning, they learn to have this interior connection. And to know about their selves. I also used to tell them, if you want to know about yourself, whether you are a person who always find fault with your friend in the class, because they also don't like, you know, see, they come always with, with complaints, sister, she is not angry with me, that one told this and all that, those fights are there. So I used to tell them, if you have fights, to get rid of these fights and all that, you have to know yourself whether you are angry now whether you are impatient now all those things are told in the morning prayer time in common for that you have to be silent at your silence bell and see uh, were you angry with your, at the at that period with someone all that so these things are told so that they learn to discipline their emotions that's why i told this long story shanali uh, just to tell you how we tackle because if we go to bring them and tell them uh, okay you do all these things they are not going to listen according to the present generation but when we say when you do like that you have strength to be patient you have strength to do your other uh, studies well then you will have a lot of friends in your class otherwise you all come with complaints she is not talking to me my friend has gone and all these things are formed in these uh, way. So this is another way discipline, helping them to discipline their emotions from their childhood, especially in their uh, school age, very, very especially grade 8 or 9, always have some kind of issues like that. So and also, Shanali, we also have religious assemblies on Fridays. Uh, other four days we have common prayers uh, and on Fridays, uh, each really, uh, religion, they have their uh, prayers separately. So with all that, mainly we focus the faith formation according to the Catholic Church as well as according to the other religion and also the uh, value-based uh, education. So it is mainly done in Catholic Institute. 
Uh, there's another good thing in Catholic uh, Education Institute. Uh, we really help them even though they come from other religion to Catholic schools. Uh, of course, we give the priority to in our admission for the Catholics. We have the percentage of taking other religion. Once they come, we uh, give the freedom for them to learn their own religion because actually they have to form themselves according to the precepts they have embraced, the, the faith they have embraced from their childhood. So uh, that is a, another issue and also Shanali, we also motivate and instruct the parents of how they should even to a school, how they should wear and come. Sometimes unfortunately according to the present generation, uh, even the mothers forget that they are mothers. So the way they wear the attire has to do a lot of things. So I used to tell them kindly, gently, lovingly, Amma, you have to come to school this way. So in those way, we also have a lot of motivational programs, how they have to bring up their children. In order to bring up their children, how they have to form themselves as a proper mother, as a proper father. So those things are also come under disciplining the parents as well as when we, if we are going to discipline the parents first, they also give that values to the children at home. Otherwise, we, uh, when we only tell all those things, uh, children also get confused. Sisters and the teachers are telling one thing in the school and my parents are this way. So we, we have taken that as a very uh, main uh, object uh, in our schools that we have to motivate the parents, mold them, guide them to become proper parents. Thereby they give the good values, disciplines to their children. So when we also trust that in the Catholic education, in our institute, children get a lot of plus points from everywhere, then when they hear it over and over again at home as well as in the school, this is the child, the child is formed beautifully, thereby the class, then the society and the country. So these are the things we do and other many more things. Sister Riane, I really like to agree with you because parents should play a major role in setting an example in their child's life as well. Uh, sister Nirmali, I want to ask you now, as uh, Sister Rihanna said, that discipline plays a major role and when it comes to these obligations in schools and the Catholic Church, it, it's important that the parents take one step further and encourage their children also to do these steps. As you said, just because the school says so, if the parents don't follow it, the child will be confused. What are some of the steps that your school has taken in order to encourage parents, to encourage their children in order to follow these procedures? Uh, talking about discipline, Shinali, uh, uh, discipline should not be imposed from outside always. Uh, to teach the child discipline, outside imposition is important. But it must be all the while, discipline must not be imposed from outside. It has to be uh, interior conviction of the child so sometimes you have to check whether that is uh, being formed in the child now i remember in my school when i was that uh, st paul's kelanya girls school uh, discipline disciplinary actions were taken uh, with children uh, many times sometimes you have to check whether they are really disciplined now there were some mango trees in the school i remember <laughs> and laden with fruits and I have told him these mangoes are not for just picking and eating anyone anywhere at all. Leave them when it is ripe we will share. So I remember even when the uh, ripe fruits were touching their heads children are not plucky and I thought that was great discipline. Uh, then when the fruits were ready we used to uh, pluck them with the teachers we to prepare acharu and uh, various uh, cut the fruits and give the children we used to give the prefects to divide in classes so uh, discipline has to be uh, interiorized thing because when they go back to society only in the things that we do in school if we stress uh, it's not enough we have to check whether discipline of the child is from inside 
because Catholic education is very much other-centered education. Now, when the child goes to the society and live with other people, uh, it has to be uh, caring for yourself, caring for others. That discipline is very important there, relating to all the people. Uh, then also working independently as well as working with others. That's discipline. So when a job is given to a child, how the job, how that child perseveres in that job. So all that is discipline. So that that is uh, given importance in the Catholic schools. Thank you, Sister Nirmali. Now, just before we continue our discussion further, I think we should go into a short commercial break. You're watching Gen XYZ. We'll be back soon. Welcome back to Gen XYZ and we are in discussion with Reverend Sister Nirmari and Re Reverend Sister Rihanna and I think in the second segment we spoke about how important discipline is and how you all incorporate disciplinary measures inside of your school. Now since both of you all are inside of this congregation called Apostolic Carmel Congregation, what role do you all play as principals, as teachers in this education system? Yes. Irish Apostolic Kamal Congregation, Apostolic Kamal Sisters in Sri Lanka. So it's our centenary year actually, 100 years in Sri Lanka. We have started our education in Sri Lanka 100 years ago in 1922. So uh, it's a great achievement, 100 years we have been serving the nation in Sri Lanka, uh, giving color to education. So in 1922, we received an invitation from uh, Right Reverend Gaston Robiche, that is Bishop of Trincomalee. And uh, our pioneers came from India. They arrived in Trincomalee and started the school there, St. Mary's uh, Convent, Trincomalee. And then from there, Baticolo, Kalmune. And today, I'm proud, proud to say that we have uh, 258 sisters in Sri Lanka, Apostolic Kamal sisters in Sri Lanka and uh, 42 different convents, north, south, east, west, everywhere. We have spread all over Sri Lanka, 42 convents, and that's a big number. So uh, at the moment, we have 95 teaching sisters. Apart from the retired teaching sisters like me, there are 95 teaching sisters in schools and uh, about uh, 20, uh, 20 state schools and 17 of them are sister principals are managing so they are headed by our sisters so that's a great service to the uh, people of Sri Lanka and then also we have about uh, 27,373 children in our care at the moment so we teach in government schools as well as private schools yeah. so we have been able to reach out to uh, children of all sorts, uh, Sinhala, Tamil, uh, also international schools, in international schools also some of our sisters are teaching. Uh, so uh, we have been able to do a great service. Uh, we consider education not only in school uh, teaching. Uh, we have um, uh, a center for school dropouts in Maharagama. That is, children who have no uh, facility to go to school are admitted there. Uh, overage students are admitted there. So, apart from the normal procedure of schools, we have that type of uh, centers also. Orphanages, they are also uh, centers for education, uh, children's homes. So, I am um, proud to say at the moment um, uh, there are plenty of uh, this, uh, children's homes, boarding houses, hostels uh, adjoining the schools. So uh, we have been able to serve the nation in a wide range, a universal service in the field of education. 
I'm pretty sure, Sister Nilbradi, that every one of us is appreciative of this service of yours as well. Uh, Sister Rihanna, would you be able to tell us a little bit about the challenges that you all are facing and how did you all overcome? Challenges, uh, as we are a teaching order, teaching congregation, Sister uh, Nilbradi explained to you very beautifully. Uh, we, we do uh, a service as teachers in government Catholic schools and Catholic uh, private schools, international schools, while serving them, even though we have our orientation toward uh, value-based education, faith formation, all that, but the society has changed now. Children have different motives, different way of thinking, uh, and also they are, uh, they are more to, they are go, going more into this uh, modern technology. So actually modern technology is a very good thing for the students to excel in their studies, to have, uh, uh, to discover many more things and to give their contribution in a beautiful way. But unfortunately, this modern technology, uh, they are using it in a negative way. So it has become a great challenge to all of us in our schools because now during the pandemic situation, the children were asked to, they were forced to be at home because of the pandemic. So the classes were done in online, we had online education. So one, uh, as a principal of a government, government Catholic school, I faced one challenge. I could not give my students uh, the proper education because most most of them are poor so they couldn't buy these gadgets and all that and even for the data issues were there so because of their poverty they couldn't uh, learn properly uh, so it was uh, a drawback for their studies for their future that is one point at the same time the children who had the gadgets uh, uh, the phones or whatever uh, some of them used it proper way with the guidance of the parents and some of them did not use, use it in a proper way. I mean they have gone into bad things because parents are also ignorant on that matter. Some parents, uh, they are well informed of those things and they guided their children in a proper way but uh, unfortunately those who are ign ignorant of these things, they, some of them know only to handle a call or a thing. But, uh, going in detail into it some of them so but children were much more advanced on it and some took a, a positive uh, outcome of it and some went in a wrong way i suppose because we see and also some of the children have lost their thinking capacity how to do all that uh, thing because they were just listening to the teacher through online education but some, if one te if teacher has told something, you will see on YouTube and see on this matter, some have advanced in a different way. So this is one of the challenges. Uh, and also the parents are also, that is of modern technology I spoke on. Uh, the other one, uh, parents are not motivated in some of our schools. In some of our schools, the, some of the parents who are motivated, they motivate the children for a good way. But, uh, in most of the other school parents are not motivated to motivate their children for higher goals. Uh, they think just sending them to schools it's okay. Uh, and uh, some of them think only learning English is uh, essential, not the other matter. So they look for uh, English medium schools or uh, international schools but they uh, lose the other, other sense of education, holistic education I mean the value-based education and all that I mean uh, some are not at all interested in motivating the children or making them stu study oriented they think they are going to school that is there uh, so we have to motivate the parents uh, so that is another challenge and also uh, the, the poverty of some of the parents also a challenge because however we want to uh, put them to a nice way and to uh, give them good values so they need things for that so while uh, and as apostolic Carmel sisters actually I, I am proud to say also we visit our parents and uh, their 
their homes, our sisters and my sisters and my staff and also in all our schools, our sisters visit the families, see to the need of their needs of the family and cater to them and speak to them. And also uh, because of these uh, challenges in the parents' lives, uh, so I also want to tell how the Apostolic Karma sisters uh, help them. So we also help the parents in those their, in their challenges how to have a good family life. Because if we don't have a proper family life, it really affects the child. So that is what the uh, uh, challenges we face because we are uh, asking the child why you are doing all these things and all. But when we go into the deeper uh, problem of it, it's in the family. So Apostolic Karma Sister has sister spoke on the centenary year of our congregation. Uh, it was already from the beginning we were having this uh, visiting the parents, the families of our children. Uh, and also we have organized new ways to um, uh, help the children in giving the uh, financial assistance actually uh, with the centenary year. Our congregation decided to help the poor children in providing stationery, uh, uh, some uh, opening bank books and all that. That is something we did with the uh, centenary. I also would like to tell you, Shanali, uh, while Sister was telling it came into my mind, we also have uh, in our uh, Apostolic Carmel Education System the Joyful Living Series. That means so the set of books which uh, teach the children and the parents the values, how they have to embrace the faith. So actually in our library periods, uh, we, we have inserted this uh, Joyful Living series also to teach them moral values. So that is something we are doing especially from our congregation in, uh, in our schools. Uh, and through that, we motivate our teachers also, how they have to live their family lives, how they have to have the character building, and how they have to impart it to the students, uh, all that. So that is one thing. Then we also had this another thing I want to tell, because children, they cannot remember anything. That is another, uh, however we teach them, because they are more into this modern society, all this, they have to watch TV programs, all that, that is, uh, it has to happen. But not taking in into the study matter much, or the things what they should uh, take into their uh, hearts and minds. So then when they come to the class, they are like uh, disturbed, confused, they cannot recollect themselves and study properly. Because of that, we have introduced 100 box calculation. Uh, project on uh, in, in with our centenary program in order to raise the standard of the student and also to learn how to recollect myself within two minutes to uh, see to those sums because within two minutes they have to fill 100 bucks so it's uh, quickly they have to do within two minutes means very fast when they le learn to think fast they learn to solve problems, they learn to remember things. So that is something that all that even though it's education matter, through that they build the character. Uh, so like that so many things we do and also the many people like when the women religious teach, yeah, the children have a Catholic uh, motherly atmosphere in the school also. They freely come to tell the sisters uh, we have this problem, that and all that. So. Through all that, we try to get close to the families, the children, and help them. So we have challenges, as I state, uh, told you first, and we also have taken precautions for these challenges uh, in this uh, time as we celebrated the centenary year of the Apostolic Tamil Congregation. So that is why I want to stress a uh, little more longer, uh, because even though challenges were there, sisters have taken these uh, things to help the families as well as our students in our Catholic institution. That's amazing, sister, and it's very appreciative of you for providing all these services. I'm pretty sure that your services are in good hands and people do appreciate this as well. I think uh, we are reaching our end of the show as well. Just my last question for you, what's your final vision and what are the future plans you all have in this congregation in order to take this school forward? Actually, uh, Shenali, uh, 
in the future uh, we look for citizens uh, productive creative citizens and that is done mainly in education in the school uh, uh, today the child i wonder if the child enjoys education in the school because uh, unlike people of my generation uh, the children are stressed out today with their book studies a um, lot of stress is given to um, the book education the vast amount of study matter given to the children uh, and some of those things are not that important to later in life so the number of school books they have to carry daily to school in heavy school bags which is not very uh, good for their health harmful for their health so uh, with those challenges and uh, also uh, they are assessed book wise their values are not assessed their attitudes are not assessed so for the future when we look for future citizens we have to look for well formed citizens people who can think out of the box uh, solve their own problems in daily living and uh, making correct decisions in daily life so that type of citizens we are looking forward to so if we want to expect something for the future citizens today we have to do that formation in the school uh, so uh, now in our time uh, school was a very interesting place study was very interesting lot of free time extra curricular activities leisure time and also we did not have this tuition menace so much in our time Uh, so uh, as a result uh, now uh, if a, uh, there was tuition uh, uh, if a person is weak in a subject or a certain topic the whole class would come round to coach up and help and teachers in our time uh, they were very god conscious in their in the task given to them uh, very uh, child oriented education they gave us so the teachers took it upon themselves Uh, at their sacred duty to guide the children today i wonder whether there is enough time in the school to concentrate on that formation for the future citizens so uh, uh, the people uh, actually when a student the child must be able to read well write well speak well but more than that creativity should be there now in the society we see people whole time grabbing from the society rather than contributing to the welfare of the society but in the future we have uh, the, the desire to build up nation for that expectation to contribute to the uh, society productively using the world around so it's not only book education today it's all round education of the child Thank you sister and we've come to the end of our show as well and I thank you very much for taking the time to share your experience with us and I wish you all the very best also on your anniversary 100th anniversary in the congregation thank you very much again for joining us and that was our episode on gen xyz this week we will be back again next week with another matter that affects the youth or a topic based on the youth just in case you couldn't watch us on air you can always rewatch by catching us on our youtube page youtube.com/adadarana english i'm susan shanali stay safe and have a good night